Hey, my name is Henrik Linder. I'm from Sweden and I play bass in Dirty Loops. One of my first experiences with bass effects was, I guess, from Les Claypool of Primus with this distorted, filtered uh, slap bass sound. Um, and also from Flea, I guess, and that's like why I wanted to buy my first effects. Yeah, one person that inspires me with effects uh, now is Ian Martin Allison. Uh, I think he uses effects in a really cool way, like especially his synth bass sounds, and it's really cool. So if you haven't checked him out already, do it, because you won't regret it. My first effect that I ever got was some, I think a Korg multi-effect uh, that was available in the 90s. I don't think it was like a super awesome unit, but it could make some really weird sounds and that was a lot of fun. The first uh, time I like uh, tried a Line 6 pedal, it was my brother who's a guitar player had uh, the green big ass delay unit. Uh, so that was the first Line 6 pedal I ever got. Uh, it did a lot of sounds and yeah, that's how I got into it. I started using the HX Stomp uh, stuff pretty much when they came out. Like they're very portable and easy to program and user friendly and sounds great and gets the job done. So I used them on several gigs uh, where it's easy to switch between different presets for songs and where you have like a small rig and like they fit in your bass case and everything like that. So I think it's a great unit. Uh, I kind of think I go by feeling a lot. Like uh, if they're available, I press stuff and see what happens. I usually like effects that doesn't mess with the overall EQ too much so that, it, that you don't press a pedal and it completely changes the sound. I like when they respond organically somehow. The effects I use the most is EQ, uh, Octaver, some kind of envelope filter, and maybe like overdrive, chorus, and then there are some fringe uh, effects that I use a lot as well. Like uh, when a delay that's split into eight different ones that's controlled with a modulated delays, that's controlled with a volume pedal. And yeah, some reverbs and harmonizers, and it depends on the songs. Uh, but yeah, if you have them, use them. Dirt Loops, the effect used the most is definitely EQ because we, when we tour, we have backtracks, so it changes the EQ for me between slap and finger or palm mute or soloing. So I have like a lot of different EQs that it changes. Then it's uh, octavers, envelope filters, and a bunch of delays and reverbs for the chord parts and stuff like that as well. So, uh, and uh, with all these units, you, you can kind of like switch them to go to different outputs. So I usually put the delay and reverbs and all the modulation effects in that it goes out in the front of house, like through, uh, on the separate channel in stereo. And then I have another one that goes into the amp. And that's a really neat trick. Like you used to have to carry a refrigerator in order to do that 30 years ago. And now it's available in a really small box. <laughs> Uh, I think the best uh, reason to get into effects is if you have some song or some sound that you really like uh, that you heard on a record or live or anything is to like Google the person and see what kind of gear they're, they're using and try to mimic that thing and like get into it by doing that because it's kind of a natural way of getting a sound that you want instead of buying a lot of gear and uh, then figure it out from there. So. That would be my advice, like if you want to get into effects. And Octavers are always like very useful for bass players and a good place to start. Mm -hmm.